Hey guys. How's everybody doing today? <clears throat> hey, Peter. Just give it a couple more minutes. Opening's going reasonably well now, Trevor. Thank you. Hola, Federico. ¿Qué tal? Muy bien. Sí, muy bien. Hey, Damien. Okay, uh, yeah, we're, we're in phase two now, so we're allowed to travel freely. We have to wear masks in public and we are allowed to gather in socially in no more than 15 people. <clears throat> so we're getting there. I think by the end of June we'll be good. No, we had no new deaths for two days as well. And only 66 new cases in the whole of Spain a day ish. So the very strict lockdown, and I mean strict, because the police over here are not friendly, uh, seems to have worked so far. Okay, so this is being recorded, guys, and today's theme is Elliot Wave. Maybe too political over there for me. Don't like politics, don't like politicians. Anyway, I don't talk politics. So what I want to do today is we're going to go through Elliot Wave only, guys. Elliot Wave only. This is the theme for today. I want to talk about some recent trades like I always do. Okay, so first one, AIG. Uh, we traded this this week. Yeah, all panelists and attendees. So we traded this this week in a circle, basic fifth wave move. This is an hourly time frame on AIG, on a stock. So I'm just gonna to go to the daily first because I wanna show you that I'm actually in this on the daily as well, but we added to it and took it off pretty quick. So on the daily, I am long on a roller coaster. Okay, and it's in profit and it's locked in. So I'm confident already that this stock is behaving and the bullish trend is going, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so then on my multiple time frame strategy, which I teach on my live course, we talk about going down the time frames and looking for moves when we get a pullback. So each one of these vertical lines is a day. You can see for three days we pulled back on this. On this 60 minute time frame, we had a wave four pullback. Remember the rules for this wave four pullback. The first one is it's got to hit one of our pullback zones. Green, 85% probability it's gonna hit the new, the fifth wave target zone. 80% in the amber, red in the 75%. The next thing we look at the behavior of the wave four, it pulls back between 90 and 40% on the, uh, the 535 oscillator. And then the stochastic on the way four crosses in the oversold zone. Tick in a box, tick in a box, tick in a box, tick in a box. Okay. So then when we look for entry strategies, because that's one of the biggest things here, and it's about entry strategies. I use, again, I want to look what the risk reward is. So remember, when we go long, we've got to look at sensibly outside of the six four moving average high. So we've got the wave four low, we go one or two cents below there, but also here is the high of this previous day. We had the high and we had the low where the wave, the wave four was down here. So what you do, your entry has to be above this high of this day, okay? So our entry is just over $31, 31.07, something like that, okay? 
So my risk to reward now is one to two into the fifth wave target zone. Great looking risk to reward. And that's the last bit of um, the formula, if you like, the ingredients for this particular trade. Pullback zone, check. 535, check. Stochastic in the oversold zones crossed over against the main trend, check. Risk to reward, sensible entry strategy above the high of this day. The stops below there, I use the um, Fib extension to measure that. And that's a one to two into the fifth wave target zone. There's no reason for me to not get into that trade. So we get into this trade here, okay, on Monday. Gaps up Tuesday, almost hits the target, and then Wednesday we're in, okay? So really, really simple. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday out, okay? So with these types of trades, you have to be in them no later than a Tuesday because you cannot carry these over the weekend. There are short-term swing on a 60 or a 30 minute time frame, and you need to find those on a Sunday so you can set them up to trigger Monday or Tuesday, okay? That's the ideal time. So most of these trades will hit the fifth wave target zone before the end of the week. Regardless, you've got to be out. And that stocks, okay? So let's go now to two trades I did today with my inner circle on copper, on futures, okay? First one, on the two minute, on copper, okay? Wave four pullback finds support in the green zone, check. Got the false breakout on the top here, pulls back, crosses over in the oversold zone, check. 535, 90 to 140, check. No reason not to get in. We go long, it blasts through the fifth wave zone, we take profit, okay? Then it pulls back. I like this pullback. What does it look like on the three minute now? I was saying to myself, and this is what we looked at. So on the three minute, and this is where isolation comes in, okay? On the three minute, that pullback that we saw on the two minute after the fifth wave high here is now a fourth wave, okay? Because I isolated at this point, the previous wave four pivot. Remember, we're tracking this, this, um, this trend. So then I got another wave four pullback and we trade the fifth wave again, twice in one day, twice in one day. Now I wanna go back to the two minute and I wanna show you why I was confident on that next trade, okay? Right, so, now that's the three minute. Let's go to the two minute. Okay. Right, I'm gonna look at the oscillator in detail. Remember back to the boot camps and a lot of other things, and you've probably forgot, okay? We need the fifth wave is usually less intense than the third wave. So the humps that you see in the oscillator, the fifth wave should be lower than this third wave. So we get oscillator divergence. It should be like that. So you get a less intense move, okay? So there's less momentum and you get that move up on the fifth wave zone. So this is divergence, okay? Now, in this case, when it hit the fifth wave, we weren't divergent at all. This had made a new high on these, um, on the crowning here on this fifth wave move. So when it pulls back against there and we find a higher support level, that is still moving higher because this now becomes a wave three on a different time frame because this hump is bigger than these humps and we need the big hump to be the 30 minute, uh, the, sorry, the, um, the wave three. So we go back to the three minutes. We see that pullback, we isolate at these lows. One, two, three, four, okay, boom, yeah. And we can see now on this wave three, Here, 
now we can see divergence. You see the fifth wave? The bump on the oscillator is lower. We have divergence. That bullish trend is going to suffer today. Okay, that's it. It's had its move and we've got the divergence. The potential for a trend reversal is a lot higher. And as it happens, there we go. We came down, we've come up again, and now we're coming down again. Does that make sense to you guys? So there's a little bit of an extra nugget in there. And I do talk about it um, in the live training when we talk about trend reversals, about that oscillator divergence. Uh, and on my website, uh, new website called paulbrabby.com, um, I will be putting a course together. You can buy the gap that's got all of this in. Uh, which is really, really cool. So does that make sense? Any questions on uh, trading that fifth wave? The it's simple. All the rules are met. You go. Then on that time frame, on that fifth wave, the, uh, there's no oscillator divergence. We've made a, you know, let's keep it simple. We made a bigger bump. You know, that crowning on the oscillator is bigger. Let's look on a different time frame. Let's isolate. Let's see if that wave four pullbacks meets the criteria. Yes, it does. We trade the fifth wave. Have we got another one? No, we haven't because we've got oscillator divergence. It's going to come down. And it did. Okay, when I decided, to, yeah, I use the Fib extension when I work out the risk to reward. So I'm going to do that again for you here. Okay. So on TOS, I'm using the Fib extension. Yep. Yeah. So down on the right, it's this right one here, Fibonacci extension. Then I want to put a Fibonacci extension is three clicks and it works out risk to reward if you like in this case. So you, your first click is one tick below the wave four low. Your second click is on your entry. Now entry hat for me had to be above this shoulder here, this pivot. So the entry is just above there at 2807, second. Then the third click you do at the same, okay? So then we have a one to 1 1.6 to the fifth wave target zone. Does that answer your question, the anonymous attendee? Okay, so it's the Fib extension tool, Kevin. Uh, we we click first click below the wave four, second click where our entry is going to be. Yes, it's above the six four moving average high here, but I need to get above this shoulder here. Okay, so two four eight oh seven. Yeah, risk reward one because we're risking one whole one. That's the one to one to the wave three. 1 to 1.6 into the fifth wave target zone. Really, really simple. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you, you can't, you, on, on Think or Swim, you can only have one default, which is bloody annoying. Um, but that's the way it is, I'm afraid. Um, on, you know, you need a lot more expensive uh, type of uh, software. Uh, platform that gives you those multiple uh, default options. Okay. Okay, Trevor, how do I use the daily? I mean, it's just to confirm the main overall trend. Uh, let me just restore that a second. So on AIG, go to the daily. I'm already in a trade. I'm intimate with this stock. We've had a big move down on a uh, pandemic move, if you like. I've got a roller coaster long, but I didn't go long until 2818 above all of this resistance zone. So I'm already in this trade, okay? But then I have a pullback, which doesn't take me out. This is the daily time frame. I have a pullback against my tra trade. It doesn't take me out of the trailing stop. I've got to look down the time frames to see if that pullback is a wave four. I've got to take advantage, whether it's a different trade in, a, in another account, or if you're in this one physical and you want to trade it options, uh, is it another opportunity to trade? So then when you go down the time frames and you go to the 60, that three day period that we saw there is a wave four pullback. 
you've got to go. All the criteria are met, okay? Pulls back, 535, stochastic. I'm, I already understand that the overall trend now is bullish. In this case, I'm already in a, in a trade, okay? Uh, another trade that we had, which was a winner this week, was AXP. Okay, again, 60 minute time frame, wave four pullback, green zone, 535, stochastic, risk to reward, one to two, boom. Okay, we had, right, let's put that small, we had AXP, AIG, uh, VLY. So let's look at VLY. Okay, that's not quite there yet, but we got out 1, 1 to 1.6. Really good, great trade. We had VER, which is a monster as well this week. Okay, uh, so this hit the fifth wave target zone yesterday. Boom. Yeah, wave four pullback. Wave four, amber zone, 535, stochastic. We had this week five or six of these trades on the inner circle. Huge week. Huge week for stocks trading there. Really, really simple, but following the rules. So what does this VER look like on the daily right now? Okay. Again, it looks like a lot of stocks right now. We've had this big move down and we've had this grind up and we, our entry for, for the 60 minute was breaking these resistance zones. So I know we've been grinding up after that big move down. Okay. Does that make sense, Trevor? Okay, I think ESI was one of them as well, wasn't it? There's another one, okay. Tipped into the green zone, 535, stochastic, boom, yeah. So it's understanding what the main trend is doing on the daily time frame, where you are in that trend. Uh, and then, you know, when you see that pullback over two or three days, especially sort of going into the end of the week, like we did last week, these are prime targets for your Monday, Tuesday trades to carry through to Thursday or maybe Friday, depending where they are. Uh, they, they're good trades. Even if you just risk, you know, $500, $250 per trade, you've got five of those. They're all making one to 1.6. That's a couple of grand in, in a week. I'm not saying they happen every week, but once or twice a month, you're going to get these pullbacks on the Thursday, Friday, which allow you to do that. Are we doing that right now? Don't know. You know, we, the stocks have had a reasonably good move, but quite a few of them are red today. If they're red tomorrow, that's a prime time to start looking at some of those stocks on uh, a um, 60 minute time frame, 30 minute time frame to see how that pullback went over Thursday, Friday. Was it a wave for on that shorter time frame? Is it a tradable? If, if we start bullish on Monday and we go through the week pretty bullish. Okay. Any questions on these, on the stocks? It's a simple strategy. And it's keeping to the rules, guys. Remember the rules. Pullback zone, check. 535, check. Stochastic crossover, if you go along in the over in, in the oversold zone, check. Entry strategy in risk to reward, good go. It's that simple. Okay, that simple. And as you've seen, we've not just done it on, on stocks. We today I traded two fifth waves on copper. You don't get fifth wave trades every single day when you're trading futures because not every day is a trending day, but today it was trending for copper. Identifying those moves by having, um, for me, uh, ES or YM, let's have a look. Uh, to be honest, uh, ES could be pulling back now, actually, let's have a look. Ooh, that's a deep pullback. That's a deep pullback, but we'll have a look. Have a look on the five minutes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to isolate these lows, which were before the session opened. So these are the overnight lows. I tell you now, this is too deep a pullback. Uh, that is 1542. Too 
too late in the day for me to try to light that first two, two hours or so. Yeah, so this pullback is too deep. Now you can see now we, we almost got a V-shaped reversal today. Okay, so um, that's right, Trevor, you got it, perfect. So again, Elliott wave today on the index is pretty tough because we had a, we basic, basically had a straight up move, parabolic move, and then we've retraced. And again, you can look at this, you can use your fib retracement here. This is probably about a 786 retracement so far. Uh, so I put my retracement tool on high to low for the day. I'm going to go in there. I'm going to edit. Okay. There we go. We're coming up to the 786 retracement. That's last chance saloon. For me, if that goes through there, we definitely ain't going to return today. Okay. This could be the sign that Friday could be a, a, a negative day. Uh, I know. I don't know if... Uh, we are for, for my for the mega members. Cecilia's in here. Uh, I know Greg's in my inner circle. He will he will be with me tomorrow, uh, unless he's flying. Um, so uh, yeah, the mega members. We are trading tomorrow live. So it could be a negative day tomorrow. Um, you know, seven eight six is is the one. That's the key one for, for me. I don't like a retracement through six one eight. To be honest, I need it to find. I really like the ones that find support here on the, the 382 and the 55 and then go again. That would have been a way forward, but that just kept coming down. Okay. So there were, yes, um, on the way up on ES, there was a roller coaster. Again, we're doing uh, Elliott Wave today, uh, and there was a small roller coaster coming down, but yes. But it, again, it's not, indexes aren't trending today. It's a V-shaped return, if you like. There's no continual trend. Whereas HG was trending, so we trade HG. You know, you've got to trade the thing that's trending. Any more questions? Come on, guys. It's, I'm here for you. Okay, I don't prepare anything. I just show you what I've traded during the day or during the week. Uh, using the specific indicator that we're talking about for the week. And you know me, I show you something every week that I've traded on that specific indicator because I use them all. Is there anything else on a decent looking pullback? Hmm. What's 6E look like? I have 60 on the 10 minute to my right. I'm just looking at that now to see what that looks like. Ooh, it's gone, yes, there we go. So, so we've had a wave four pullback. We've had a nice move up today on the roller coaster. Okay, we've had a wave four pullback on the five minute. It's grinding up. Why is it grinding up? Because Europe's closed now, guys, okay? Uh, so the volume in this futures contract is going to be quite small because Europe trades more currencies than anywhere else, Europe and Asia. Okay, so Europe's closed, Asia's not open yet. Uh, this is why, this was a great way for pullback. If this was ES, I'd be going, I'd have been going along probably just over this pivot here, um, you know, but it's not. So if you're, if you're going to go long on a fifth wave move, at this time of day on a currency pair, it's a tough call, okay? You've got to know where the volume comes from. So we're in the latter half of the US session. Europe's closed. It was a great way for pullback, don't get me wrong. Uh, if you want a longer term play, put it in, let it go overnight, make a small risk, you probably probably get there overnight. But you've got to be aware of the time of day you know, 1745 here, 1700 is where Europe really closed. It pulled back and then it's gone sideways. Uh, I decide when I see the behavior, Trevor, I don't decide that I'm going to use uh, bits today or I'm going to use Elliott Wave or Roller Coaster. 
I really, really like uh, just to see how the day progresses. Are we in a trend? So when we go to HG, for example, oops, sorry. Bit dyslexic there. So when we go to HG, I go to the 60 minute. First of all, where is the current intraday trend? Okay. Current intraday trend, we've had a long bullish trend. We've pulled back against it, found support. We're going up again. I'm only interested in longs today, whether that's bits, roller coaster, or Elliott Wave. Okay. So for me, I, I, I wake up during the European morning, obviously. Uh, I find this fine support and starts to move up again. The trend is set for the day for me. It's trending up. I'm only interested in longs, not shorts, interested in longs. And I let the day progress and see what's going on. Okay. So again, wake up. The trend for the day is long. Uh, then just, you know, if I just bring back the two minute here. Let's go big. Okay, so this was this time it spent during the European morning in that support zone. Then we broke out. Then we had a pullback. Then I traded the fifth wave move. Okay, those were the moves. There was no other, um, no other indicator suite that was good enough for me there. Okay. Then we took profit, then it pulled back. I went to a different time trade frame and traded this as a fifth wave move, okay? There were shorts coming down here, but where is the trend of the day, Trevor? It's long, I'm not gonna go short because they are less likely to succeed, especially when you've just taken a crap ton of money doing two longs. You're not gonna give it away by going against the trend. So Trevor, it really depends what's presenting to me. Um, there's no defined rule. If something's trending, it's trending. If it's not trending, like ES, for example, I'm more likely to use bits or roller coaster. So when something's not trending like ES, I can use bits. Okay, um, when the pullback's too deep. So the main trend on the 60 minute is up so i'm only interested in longs for es okay let's go big on es on this five minute time frame so during the european morning we were pretty flat okay we then start to move up this is the pre-market uh, session here 14 30 2 30 my time 8 30 us time starts to starts to rise okay i'm always looking you know looking for these bits they're not brilliant massive types of trades okay you know at this stage the pullback was too narrow it was too shallow there was no way for a pullback it did find support was there bits trades yes there was okay it's not trending today as such because the pullbacks weren't against deep enough against the trend so i'm only interested in the longs it pulls back again look it wasn't a way for pullback I know because the Elliott waves weren't counting today properly on ES because it's not trending. We come back up, we get another bit, so we go long again. Okay. Do we take the shorts? No, we don't because the main trend is long. Okay. When we go to the six minute time frame, the main trend for ES on the 60 minute time frame is bullish. We ain't going to go short. We're going to be patient and we're going to wait for the longs. Okay, whether that's Elliott Wave, Bits, or Roller Coaster. What, if it's in a trend during the day, uh, if it's trending well and the Elliott Wave's behaving, we'll take the Elliott Wave. If it's not trending, uh, if it's pretty sideways, sometimes I won't even trade it. Uh, but if we're getting decent moves, I'll go for Bits. Uh, and then obviously Roller Coasters, um, they come into their own because we just get the signals for those uh, on the uh, Smart List as well. Uh, and, you know, and they do work out pretty well. But for me, the way I set up my trading for futures is that I've got uh, three minute time frames, two three minute charts on the right hand side here. 
So the top chart has my bits, okay? It has the uh, bias for the bits. It also has the stochastic, yeah? Underneath that chart is another three minute chart. It has the roller coaster, the Elliott wave, and the um, oscillator. Same on the left hand side, but for five minutes. Then I'll show you around my computer, okay? So then to the right of me, I have, bear with me, I've got to choose the right screen now. Da, 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 da. Let's see, is that one? To the right of me, uh, you should see the one minute for ES, okay? And then you've got my 6B and 6E charts on the 10 minutes, okay? So these are the ones I'll use earlier on in the day, a European session or early in the uh, US session, okay? This was the long on 6E today. Um, and then on the left hand, oh, sorry, top above this one on the right, I have my, uh, I've got to choose the right screen here. I think it's that one. Yeah. Uh, you should see now ES, NQ, YM, and RTY. So they they let me understand how the indexes are behaving. Are they all pulling in the same direction? Is NQ going up with the others going down? Uh, this is all the five minute time frames with all the indicators on. So this is to my top right, if you like. This is the one that um, uh, uh, sort of gives me an idea of where the indexes are going. What's leading what? Is NQ leading? Is RTY leading? Uh, are, you know, is for example, is um, RTY at support or YM at support? Is that going to hold up ES? Those sort of questions going through my mind all the time. Um, then to uh, above this screen, the normal screen that you see, I have my broker. I'll just move that a second. And then I have all my smart lists. Okay. Then to the left of me, I have... the ES again, but this time it is the two minute, the 15 minute and the 60 minute. I need to see where the overall trend is. Is there a potential trade on there? You know, some of these roller coaster trades are fantastic on the 60 minute time frame. You've got, you've got to have a lot of balls because there's a lot of risk there, uh, but a lot of them are, are pretty good. Uh, and then to the top left of me, I've got uh, another screen. I can't share that one with you because that's institutional software and I use that with my inner circle. But again, that's all stocks. That's one computer. My other computer has a 49 inch monitor with loads of uh, with like six charts on it. And then to the, to the <clears throat> to also on that computer is another 27 inch monitor and that has uh, gold and the US dollar. So let's go back to the main screen. That was a long way of answering you, Trevor. I don't decide, the, the markets decide which indicator suite. All I've done over these last 16, 17 years is use these three different strategies. Elliott Wave is always my go-to, but not everything's trending every day, okay? So I needed a breakout strategy, that's the bits. I needed a roller coaster strategy for those that are going up, you know, overbought to oversold, to overbought to oversold, and to potentially get in early into those trends. Um, so I let the market tell me where they're going to go and what they're doing for the day. And I'll choose the indicator that best suits those market conditions. And for copper today, it was fantastic uh, on the Elliott wave. Copper yesterday, we traded was bits and it, it still made, you know, we, 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 we're making three, four hundred dollars a day on copper at the moment. Um, but it's using different indicators. Today it was Elliott Wave. Tomorrow it might be roller coaster. I really have to wait to see what the market presents to me, then make the decision. Apple's quite. Apple's down two dollars fifty today. I think we're going to end up, unless we have a massive bounce in witching hour. We end up red today. I think we probably going to have a red day tomorrow. Okay, guys. Remember, this is the time for you to ask questions. I'm not here to start spouting on. 
I've already shown you some examples of both stocks and futures that I've used the Elliott Wave for this week and today. You know, you've got to ask your questions. If you've got no questions, I'll go. It's 7 p.m. my time. I've been trading since 7 a.m. this morning. Uh, I'm pretty tired. Um, you know, but this is your time to ask, you know. Uh, these are my strategies. Yes, some very clever people have put them into, um, uh, into indicator suites so you guys can use them. Um, but at the end of the day, you've got to use them. You've got the questions. So you ask, ask questions, you know. I don't think I can't, you know, I can answer probably just about everything because I live with this every day. No problem, Randy. It takes time. You, my, my dad used to say, you've got to walk before you can run. Okay. And this trading is like that. Sometimes you can have a bad day. Okay. Um, you know, the only bad trade I had today was gold. Okay. But I still end up to the day because we have great copper trades. Um, but trading can be tough. Okay. No, I don't use Renko or anything gimmicky like that. Uh, I, it's, I'm not, nothing against the Andres, but I just need a candle or a bar. I need to see the high, the low. I need to see the volume and the price action. That's all I need. And I can understand the behavior of the markets. And that's all anybody needs, really. Uh, Mike, it is uh, just roller coaster is the third Thursday of the month. Okay. Um, I can go through one now and I'll talk about the ES one. Uh, but in reality, we just try to keep to theme. Uh, so when people are looking back through these um, webinars, we've themed it Elliott Wave and they expect Elliott Wave information, if that makes sense. Okay. Uh, but roller coaster, very simple. Have you got roller coaster first, Mike? Oh, ten, oh, Tesla was up ten dollars today, it's down five now. Yeah. Okay, so. Roller coaster is a MACD stochastic cross with points of control. It sounds really complicated, but in reality, the chart is really simple. Purely because we take the stochastic away, we take the MACD away, the algorithm works it out in the background, and it prints your entry, which is in green here. Okay. Let me just annotate these. So. Long green there, stop loss. Okay, if you've got a lot of room to your next trading stop position, uh, your sorry, your next resistance zone, you go long, and then it starts to print these little red lines. On other indicator suites, it's just a, a it looks like an EMA, but these are your trading stop positions. It does it all automatically for you. Yeah. There's no discounts at the moment, Frederico, I'm, I'm afraid. Um, so basically, <laughs> you literally go long. Okay, and then you start to place your trailing stop when the software prints your trailing stop. ES, three minutes. I can tell you now, because of our smart list that gives signals, that ES on the three minute has a 75% win rate. Okay. If you look at some of them, HG, for example, 83% win rate. So this is a roller coaster smart list. So this gives you the signals on all of these futures contracts on uh, one minute, two minute, three minute, five minute, 15 minute, 30 minute, 60 minute. Okay. Uh, so they're really good. But this is, it's basic stuff. There's a lot of, I used to have to do this manually. You have to check that MACD is in the right situation. You have to check that the stock assets in the right situation. And I have three um, points of control, uh, special EMAs that I use, that then gives you the signal to go long. Right, all we've done is all that, you know, information that I did manually, I gave it to somebody and they've wrote the program. So now it prints your entry, it prints your stop. 
you go long, you work out your risk. In this case, it's a big risk, so you go micro. Once it starts printing your trailing stop, you put your trailing stop in. That's it. There's nothing, there's nothing difficult about it. Does that answer your question, Mike? And there are roller coaster trades every day on different time frames, and they've got a great win rate. Look at ES turn back up there. Whoa. And it's posting a roller coaster on the one minute. No, they are on. Which platform do you got, Mike? Ninja Trader, Trading View. Ninja, yeah, roller coasters on Ninja. So if you go to the trading software page on the website, you can click, uh, select Ninja Trader. And roller coaster is the first one that comes. I don't know what's going off the website at the moment, uh, but there's roller coaster, Elliott Wave, and Bits for Ninja. So you go to roller coaster, for example, subscribe now. You choose monthly, quarterly, or yearly. Obviously, the longer you go, the cheaper it is, and that's it. Trevor, you don't. <laughs> Again, we're talking about Elliott Wave today. I don't use the bias when I am trading Elliott Wave at all. The bias really is for bits, okay? For bit signals. When the bias is green, we're going long. We get signals to go long, we go long. When he's going from green to yellow, which is neutral, to red, to neutral, to red, to green, guess what? We don't trade. Yeah. Once we get a nice little run of reds, okay, then you want to might consider trading. But remember, what did I say was the main trend for ES on the 60 minute time frame? It's it's bullish. So to take these, even though the buyer said it's red, you still need to be aware of what's going off on that 60 minute time frame, okay? That should be the warning sign to say, you know what, I'm not going to go in. But I don't use the bias when I'm using the Elliott Wave. Okay, the bias is there for breakouts. Okay, guys, anything else before I go? Not been a bad trading day today. Anybody new here today? First, I know somebody was, um, cheers, Greg. Are you in tomorrow, Greg, or are you flying tomorrow? Uh, yeah, it's for my inner circle, Frederico, and, uh, and I, on the first Friday of each month, I invite the um, mega members. The stochastic, stochastic has nothing to do with the bias, okay? I just, on think or swim, I just put it on the same uh, sub-chart to save me space on the chart, that's all. Lovely, Aletha, you're new. Did this make sense to you today? Okay. So how accurate are the fifth wave target zones? Right. So they are a target zone for, uh, for you to work out your risk reward. Yeah, uh, Alethe, you need to look at all the recordings of all the videos on the website and all that sort of thing. If you bought the indicator, you're going to need to go through the boot camps. It's practice. It's like a, an athlete. You just need to keep re repeating the same thing and getting used to it. Uh, so the fifth wave target zones are, are FIB levels, if you like, FIB zones. They are pretty bloody accurate, but sometimes they get blown through when we have that instance where the, the oscillator, um, we talked about, when we don't get the oscillator divergence. So 
when we had that two minute trade on HG, okay, it blew through the Elliott wave, the, the fifth wave zone, okay? And that happens, yeah, okay? The best will in the world, there's no nothing that, you know, trading isn't engineering. Accuracy is a zone of accuracy, not a specific, uh, you know, uh, level. When people say support or resistance levels, it's absolute bullcrap, okay? There is a zone in which things take place. Okay, and it's never, never overly accurate. But what we have, when we look at the two minute, I'm gonna bring that over. Remember, we have understanding the behavior is really important. So, so this was the fifth wave target zone on the two minute, and it did come up down and then come out to support again. Okay, so it did hit it. For me, that's great. If it blows through it, fine. But the main thing is for me is these are specific fib levels and it works out the, the behavior of way three, way four, and it gives you that zone, that target zone, the fib level. So they're accurate enough to give you a risk to reward because if the wave four finds support in the green zone, it has an 85% probability of getting to that fifth wave zone, okay? In the amber, 80%. In the red, 75%. Okay. Now remember, we didn't get oscillator divergence on this. Okay, so we, we kept going through. Then we pulled back, then we went through again. So, but then when we look on the three minutes, sorry, I'm moving charts around here. Um, okay. Look, fifth wave target couldn't push through. We got oscillator divergence, then let go. Okay, so yes, they are accurate in that they will get there. Manage the trailing stops, me personally, but uh, you know, the first trade of the day hit the fifth wave target zone, took my profit, Frederico. Okay, I'm a human being, I like money. Yeah, uh, the next time you can trade it a little bit, uh, a little bit stronger. Um, but the, the trailing is really good now, a good trailing stop. Uh, type of strategy is two candles behind, depending on the time frame you're on, um, or you can use your uh, the red six four moving average low for a long as your training stop position, that sort of thing. Or a lot of time we use the um, where is it now? The you know the lagging point of control on your bits indicator. The, the yellow point of control, sometimes we use that for our trailing stop. Or if you want to be more aggressive, the pink dots. Yeah, depends on how the move's going. Depends on how much money you've made in the day. Uh, but yeah, I mean, a lot of the time I hit the fifth wave target zone, so get out and look for something else. Yeah, uh, because it's, hit, it's got the what, you know, you risk $1,000, you're in $2,000 uh, in what, 20 minutes. Uh, on a two on a two minute thing, you know that's a good that's a good payday two thousand dollars for twenty minutes work. Go and look for another trade. The thing you can get stuck into is trailing it, and it just bobs around that fifth wave zone. When we talked about this three minute here, these zones are you know re the good fit levels. Okay, you could have been trailing and oh, all sorts here if it had taken the profit when it blew up into there. Look. It only got there once before, but if you'd have been trading this, you'd have been taken out down here. So when it blasts into that zone, take it. That, that's, that's my suggestion, okay? Because it's a good level. You've had a one to two into there, risk a thousand, one, two thousand, walk away. And then we get another pullback, you go again, you win another two thousand, four thousand dollars a day, you walk away, or four hundred dollars a day if you're only risking a hundred dollars or whatever it is. Um, you know, if it hits the fifth wave target zone, most of the time I just get out. Okay, right guys, unless there's anything else, I am going to get going and uh, call it a day. Yes, hourly, daily, weekly, four hourly, five minute, three minute, one minute. The Elliott wave tracks the trend on that time frame. You get a, the pullback is uh, 
has a lot of specific rules and when they those rules are met you get that wave four four back you trade the fifth wave it doesn't matter which time time frame no problem at all guys take care everybody and i'll see you next thursday Thank you. Cheers, guys. Cheers, everybody.